Hi everybody, Kevin Kramer here, founder of DrawnAndColoring.com and creator of this three-part free video training series for you on shading masters. You know, how do you get perfect proportions and shade like a pro every single time? This free training series is going to teach you how to draw amazingly realistic portraits and images without having to worry about proportions, stress over shading, or worry about you're not making real art. These three videos are going to be very helpful to anyone looking to draw realistic images. In this video, I'm going to teach you the two main strategies you can use for getting perfect proportions and high levels of detail in your images, no matter what you're trying to draw or current skill level. These are proven concepts and approaches that have helped me get my work published in galleries and really will take your art to the next level once you start to implement them. You can draw amazing images using these strategies and you never have to worry about your proportions again. I know a lot of artists struggle with the idea of do I have a likeness, does it look realistic, and say they can never get the amount of detail they're looking for. Now, after this video you'll be positive you can get them each and every single time you pick up the pencil to draw. How's that for a, a promise? Anyone, including you, can draw like a pro using these two core strategies and concepts. Maybe you just haven't fully ex been exposed to them or just never really thought about them before, but it only takes one concept or strategy to change everything you do in life. As you become more exposed to the different strategies and, and ideas, they'll become your vehicle for creating more masterful pieces and can really change the entire approach of drawing and creating your images and you know if you agree with that then you just need to be exposed to one or two more to really get to that next level of mastery. If you don't know me at this point I first got hooked on the work of uh, Norman Rockwell around the age of about five or six and I've been drawing ever since. His work got me on the path of drawing just about everything and anything I could find to just really master my skills and draw those super realistic images that he created so just masterfully. You know, and as I get older, I realize how powerful the biographies of the artists were as much as the images. And when I was younger, I just I was just so fascinated with the images, I never took the time to actually read the artist's bio or their stories. To me, it was just kind of all noise until the next images came. And as I got older, I finally began to realize how useful and helpful the insight and all the insights the artist to the artist process that that noise was. And that really led me to some amazing artists, which helped take my work to those next levels. And after years of studying all these masters and realistic images, I found some common elements that I use now in all of my pieces today. So there are really going to be two things that I've found that the masters work consistently utilized. And the first one was the use of size. The larger the image, the easier it is to achieve the higher levels of detail in your images. It may seem obvious, but this was the theme I finally realized after studying every one of my favorite artists. On average, almost all of their images were larger than 18 inches tall or wide, and that's a lot bigger than most sketchbooks that you can buy today. Even their sketches and preliminary drawings were larger. Looking at them in books and online just never drove that home until I actually saw one in person. And if you go back and take a second look at the size of any of your favorite artworks, or any of your favorite artists' work, especially the famous ones, they're usually a couple feet by another couple feet high. And until I was actually able to see one of my favorite artists, Chuck Close's images in person, that concept never really hit home. The size of the image dictates everything as far as how easy it is to add detail and really adds another element to your work that you probably not have thought of. Psychologically, your work takes on more authority. Yeah. The size just brings it out. And if you think about it, you really are basically shrinking yourself and the viewer down to the level of the smaller details in your picture. 
So if you've ever seen any of Chuck Close's images in person, the size of his images are definitely, definitely another element of the image to experience. They are just towering over you. And that adds another level of impact that you couldn't otherwise get. And it's like if you look up at a Statue of Liberty or a huge skyscraper building downtown, they bring another level of up to the viewer as they tower over you. It just, it really becomes an experience once you view it in person. And once I realized that, the level of detail in all of my images just skyrocketed and with no extra effort or skill than what I was putting in before. The level of authority that my images command also went up. So that's one. Two, the second strategy I came across that helped me get perfect proportions every single time was the use of a grid. I use grids whenever I'm doing a major piece. It eliminates the worry of having to think about the proportions. And when you're creating on a larger scale, it really is easy to lose sight of the overall image while you're you know, down in there working on it. And the grid allows you to focus on one area at a time and draw the entire image in just small little chunks. And Grids have been used by all the great masters for centuries to get their proportions right. So I think we can use them too. You know, the method that I use is the one I found while studying Chuck Close's work. You know, at first I take that image, that photograph, and I mount it on a solid piece of uh, a backing. And then I put a piece of clear acetate over it. Then I draw my grid on top of it. And I can draw it however I want. And then once that grid's drawn out, I just transfer that grid to the final piece. And after that, everything's completed. I draw in the images in each of those squares. The proportions are exact every single time. And since I'm only drawing a small portion of the image at a time, it allows me to draw each section more accurately and with less stress. The lines that make up each of the squares give you guidelines to work with, and it also helps train your eye to see the different shapes better and build up your key skills necessary to becoming a better artist just by looking and being able to visualize. And it also builds up your confidence knowing that you can draw anything you want and do it with skill. So one of the things you might be thinking is, okay, that's great, but I don't have the space to draw huge pictures and it seems really time intensive to draw out that grid and I don't really like math. Yeah, I don't like math either, but you know, granted the bigger your image, the bigger the surface you're gonna need and the more time it's gonna take. But if you're, if you're gonna really put in the time to draw an image and you want it to be really worth your efforts, it's gonna take some time to complete anyway. So why not just do it right and facilitate that process by planning your image out beforehand? That's what I go with. Trust me, the time it takes to draw out a grid on your paper will save you hours of corrections and headaches. If something isn't right when you're you know, halfway through the drawing, you might have to go back and fix something or an area, and you know, it usually doesn't turn out for the better. It always, for nothing, goes to the other side. All the other old masters took months to finish pieces, so I think it's worth taking a little tip from them and take your time and plan out your images. It's the sign of a more sophisticated artist and it really will be worth it to your end drawing. But even with that, I have found some ways to cut down the time and space that you need to you know, create these images. First, since the images you're gonna be drawing are gonna be bigger, to get that added detail, usually the first excuse is I don't have room for something that size or I don't have a studio like you do. There's lots of space saving options to use. There's three that I've used in the past and they work great. One is just clear off your kitchen table. That's the easiest and most accessible location in most houses. And it isn't hard to clear it off and just go to work. Kitchen lighting usually isn't all that great, but you know, since it's directly above, you might want to use a simple desk lamp or a pole light, which will help with those kind of weird shadows. And I've created a ton of high detailed images on my kitchen table, just using that pole lamp on the side. The second one I've used is just tape the paper to the wall. I did this for a picture I was drawing of the band uh, Led Zeppelin, and the paper was just a huge piece of white butcher paper, about three by four feet, and I just taped it directly to the wall, and I started drawing. And you know, there, there were bumps from, from the wall texture underneath, but if you use a thicker surface like matte board like I use now, then that's completely eliminated. You don't even have to worry about it. Third space saving tip that I found that I use is just set up an easel in a corner of your room. 
it's probably the most traditional and probably the most overlooked if you're not thinking of doing paintings or something like that. And you know, they can get expensive, but you can also make one for cheap just out of some regular two by fours or wood that you can find. And if you don't already have a dedicated space, that is a perfect way to make one really fast just in the corner of your room. So now that you have no reason to not have a workspace for your next project, the next concern that comes up is time and how intensive the process of gridding is. You know, and like I've said before, anything worth doing is worth doing right. And that, that's what I think. So taking a little extra time up front to plan out your drawing, to me, is worth at least 10 times the amount of frustration and headache avoided if something was not right to start off. You know, if you have to fix something, it's just gonna be a pain. Another objection with grids is having to do math. And as much as I really hate doing math, I still use the grids because they work. And today, math can be even sidestepped and done by a calculator app or something on a phone automatically that tells you the size and the ratio it needs to be. You don't even have to do it anymore. See, you don't have to calculate. You don't have to even use fractions or decimals. And one of the best sites that I've found is actually calculatorsoup.com. The ratio calculator instantly tells you the size of the final image and you know you can base it off of whatever size you want to blow it up to. So once the math is out of the way, all you need is some are the same basic tools to get it transferred that you would use otherwise. So there's no other friction points there for you. They're completely gone. Some of the basic tools you already have to create these are there. You know, you just first get started using the grid, all you need is some basic tools. You need a ruler, a pencil, paper, and maybe some transparency paper if you want to really get fancy like I do. So, you know, that's it. That's the, that's the process I learned with Chuck Close. You don't really need much more. You can get real fancy and get a print made of your source image and create every part of the grid like I do. But in the end, if you really want to just do the proportions, you just need those three tools. Today's most people have a printer or some sort of a computer or a tablet device that can be used to print out a grid or transparency or even just display the grid directly on the image itself digitally. So you don't even have to manually create the grid for your source image every time. Once you have a size that you like to work with, you can just buy that size paper every single time and you're set. There's no more math again, the grid is always created for your source image and all you have to do is transfer that grid to your larger surface and you're done. Keep it even easier is to simply draw the grid directly on your source image and you know that helps if your image is not the original since the grid is permanent you know to mess it up but if you have a printout it's just going to draw directly on it it's not going to be a big deal and then number two is just transferring that grid to your surface it doesn't have to be huge the size isn't how the size does help with that in the detail like i've said but you can create the exact same grid on your paper and draw it the same size as your source and you know that'll be the simplest if the size of your paper isn't already the same ratio. Once the grid's transferred, all there is left to do is draw the outline of the image in each of the boxes. That's it. It's really that easy. Your proportions will improve dramatically and the amount of detail will be effortless. And this method takes your entire image and breaks it down into small chunks, eliminating the room for error since you're drawing just a bunch of tiny images instead of one large one. The smaller images allow you to see the entire image block you're working on and draw the key lines in each until the image is just fully created. And if one of them is off, it's a lot easier to fix a smaller image than the entire image. And the perspective issue is dramatically reduced because you, you can see if a line is off or not in the right length or the right angle. So if you mess up on any piece of the image, you have to step back, readjust the line, step back again, maybe adjust another one, move another line here until maybe you get them right. Instead of just looking at the smaller images you drew in each of the squares and being able to pinpoint exactly where it's off. You're still drawing, you're still building your skills and training your eye. You're just doing it on a smaller scale and I would also argue you're doing it on a, at a faster rate since you can get that immediate feedback from your drawing as you draw. 
and it also gives you your you know it makes you give your full attention to each and every square inch of the picture you're drawing instead of some just glazing over some of the areas so as you can see you can create amazing images with less headaches and with a lot more skill and have more impact than you probably thought you know your drawings will look like real art honestly because they'll be at the size of real art and you'll be creating them with more skill and with an approach that the masters even used because it just really it works and you'll create images you can be proud to frame or entered into a contest and press your friends your family and you know one of the key things is you really focus on building your skills without the frustration of building your skills. The grids create a system for you to approach any intimidating images with confidence and poise and really know that you will achieve the best results from your efforts. So now you know the two key strategies that the masters used, that I used, for getting perfect proportions every single time and how to get amazing amounts of detail that years have been just missing. With that, I have a challenge for you. I want you to use the strategies I just taught you and create an image, create a brand new image. It doesn't have to be a huge drawing like, a like I've said. It, can e it doesn't even have to be completed, but I want to issue you a challenge to take these two strategies and create a new drawing because I know once you actually use these strategies and put them into action, you'll see the immediate benefit just like I did, and you'll wanna keep incorporating them into your own processes, however you want. Once you draw your image, scan it or take a picture of it and post it below this video. Take a draw before and draw an after picture. And I think you'll really be surprised at how much more accurate the proportions in your images are gonna be using those grid systems. And if you make them bigger, you'll get a lot more detail. So I hope this video really served you and is a good start for you to take control and start growing your skills and maybe incorporating some new useful strategies into your own workflow. Again, please leave any comments or questions below this video and I'll personally respond to them. And I hope to see you in the next video where I'll tackle some of you know, the myths about shading your drawings and filling in the drawings once you have that big outline done, which I know a lot of people struggle with. So I hope to see you in the next video. Until then, keep drawing and keep it simple.